I know about many stories of people that have been healed by prayer, for an example. So that's something that is like impossible if you don't have faith. The person had cancer, now some, he gave money to a righteous man, he made pidyon, he redeemed him in a way and that's it. He went again to the, to the checking, to the ultrasound, to MRI, I don't know, and nothing, it's clean. It's impossible. He went, he did six hours crying to Hashem. Every day he went for two hours. For 40 days he went to Marat HaMachpelah, whatever. Like, many people did many things and they had miracles in their lives. Huge tumors disappeared. All of his stomach was full with cancer and now it's gone, it's clean. Like, things happened. I know, I, me myself, I experienced miracles like those. I saw people with my own eyes. I have a friend that I was walking with him to, to the hospital. He had stomach aches. We went together to the, to the hospital. The doctors told him, listen, it's, it's cancer. you hard already. It's already spread to few places. Must make a surgery. And he was terrified. He didn't know what to do. He was crying. He was very like in shock. And I told him, we both had faith, we both believed in Hashem, but I told him now it's the time to let the doctors do their job. Like, please don't start messing around with your thoughts too much. Listen to the doctors. Now they're opening, they're cleaning, and if they say that you need some, like, uh, all, all kinds of, of treatment after, you're not arguing in this case. That, that was my opinion. That's, those were my words to him. And he said, no, I cannot, I'm still, maybe I'll do it with the duyot, maybe I'll pray, maybe I'll... Tell him, listen, you're crazy. I hear you, I want to go with you, I also have faith, but I don't see you serious enough to really clean yourself with your prayers. Like, look at you, you're not going to make it, it's dangerous. And he went and he made the first part of the surgery. And after they took the main part of that tumor out, they told him you must come in one month maximum to complete because the surgery, second surgery. And if not, like, you won't finish the year. It's like, it's a disaster. And I walked with him to one of his rabbis. And I remember we came to that rabbi's house and he looked at him and my friend told him, listen, Rav, I don't want to do the surgery. I'm afraid. So I told him, why? What's, what, what the doctors are saying? He said, that they say, I need to do this, I need to do that, and, 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 and I don't want. Is there something else that I can do? We're talking about a person, he was less than 30, maybe, and, and more than five children in, the, in that time. So the rabbi, he asked the rabbi, there is something else I can do instead of surgery? So the rabbi told him, you need to go for 40 days to Ma'arat HaMachpelah, to the grave of Avdam Vechava, Avram Vesarah, Yaakov and Leah, Yitzchak and Rivka. And if you'll go over there for 40 days, every time you'll go, you'll pray over there, Samit Bodeduyot, don't worry, you're clean. And I'm sitting with him over there and I, I can't believe it. I didn't. And I told him, listen, Rav, I would buy it, I would believe if here in front of us there would be someone very powerful, very strong, someone very committed, someone that I see in him, in his face, that he's going to uproot the forest, that he's going to turn, um, turn upside down the sky, he will, he will, he will make a, a mess, he, he will go and scream and cry and shout. Okay, I would say, you know what? Miracles can happen. I believe in miracles. But look at him. He's a rack. He's a disaster. He won't do it. He's lazy. I know him. He's my friend. He won't move. He, he, like, he barely going to make it to do those 40 days. Also to pray with heart, with passion, with, with shuvot, with I don't believe that he's going to do it. So the rabbi said, no, it's going to be okay. And I was terrified. Really? Literally, I was afraid, I was scared. We went out from the house, I told him, listen, to my friend, 
I wouldn't do it if I would be you. You can listen to him, I'm not going to tell you not to listen to that rabbi, but myself, I would tell you, go to the, go to the doctor, make the surgery. I'm, I don't know what to say. I walked with him home and I couldn't stand this situation. I went back alone, it was 11.30 at night, went back to the house of that rabbi. I wanted to enter, the door was open. I just walked back in. He told me, it didn't took you too long, the rabbi. I told him, okay. He said, yes, talk. I told him, I don't believe we're gonna make it. I'm not sure that I explained to you well enough what the doctor said. The doctor said that it spread to the liver, to the wall of the stomach, to the lungs, to the to. It's out there, you can't bring it back, it's crazy. So that rabbi looked at me and told me, you don't know how strong the power of the righteous people is. Okay. I didn't have anything to say, it's not my situation. I had just to go and walk away and to pray for him that he'll be okay. This person didn't went back to the hospital ever again from that day. I know it for sure. And he now, today, at least 10 years later, 100% okay. Nothing. He saw his doctor after maybe seven months, almost a year. The doctor that made the surgery, the one that we were talking to, the one that I promised to him that I'm bringing him back after Shabbat. I promised to that doctor and I couldn't keep my word. That doctor looked at him, he was scared. He told him, I can't believe that you're alive. He told him, believe, believe. And that's it. So I cannot argue with those crazy situations. This person, 10 years from that day, he didn't go. He doesn't suffer anymore. He doesn't have it. He's healthy. He is healthy. Hashem Yibarach took that disease from him. So you cannot ignore from miracles that you saw with your own eyes. Things that took place, things that really happened. 